next into the tank is an entrepreneur who believes there's big money to be made from big scares. Everywhere I go, there's zombies. Hi, sharks. I'm Melissa Carbone from Los Angeles. My company is 1031 Productions and I'm seeking $2 million in exchange for 10% of my company. Mm. Wow. 1031 Productions is an entertainment company that creates, <laughs> owns, and produces live attractions in the horror space. Our most popular attraction is the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, and it is not for the faint of heart. Sharks, when you take our hayride, you are entering the pitch black woods <laughs> where demonic forces Lost souls, psychopathic fun are waiting around every turn. <laughs> Just when you think the terror is over, think again. Oh, God. <laughs> eyeball me, I will kick your tush back to Texas. Yeah, Mark, get him. <laughs> okay, Melissa, you know what's really scaring the crap out of me is your valuation. So $2 million for 10% imputes a $20 million value on this scary hair ride business. Tell us why you're worth $20 million. We do attractions all year long. We have the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, which is our seasonal attraction here in LA. 17 nights. We sell out every single night. We do about $1.8 dollars right now per October. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Ah. 1.8 is really good. In 17 days. In 17, 17, 17 days, days, we have another attraction called the Great Horror Campout that we just launched, which is a summer attraction. The Great Horror Campout is our way of not being a seasonal company. It is an overnight, completely immersive camping experience, horror feet. Oh, no. So it's 12 hours. <laughs> we, we, we take 2,000 campers. <laughs> We put them in tents, and we have an incredibly interactive experience oh, that includes amazing. everything from a hell So it's hunt. basically summer camp from hell. Yeah. yeah. 1.8 million in, at the end of the 17 days, what's left? It costs us $1.2 million to produce the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. So, so I'm left with 600,000 free cash afterwards? Yeah. I mean, it varies year to year because right now we're in a launching new attraction mode. We're launching a New York Haunted Hayride, which is what we're seeking some of this money for. The Great Horror Campout, we're launching it next year in 10 cities up the West Coast. And so therein it's... lies the rub, right? Because they're very, very, very expensive to, to produce and create. Right, well, ca the campouts are cheap to produce. How much advertising and promotion do you do? We spend about $300,000. We do a ton of radio. My background is I, I ran Clear Channel Los Angeles for 10 years. So my wow. um, advertising, marketing, and one of and my other business partner is actually still with Clear Channel. So we know how to make a dollar go really far from a marketing how standpoint. How many unique individuals come through? The Hayride, yeah. we have, we have 50,000 people. We sell out every single night. So this year is our first year. We increased our max capacity to 100,800. We actually are doubling our max capacity this you, year. You sell out every night for 17 days? Every night. That's amazing. So can I extrapolate and say that the it's going to be 3.6 million in revenue this year? Yes, if we sell out. So that means this thing will generate just over a million bucks if everything works, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're an intelligent woman. I'm trying to make the leap now. We have to get back to reality on your $20 million ask. Yeah. Let's give you a fair chance of making a million bucks before tax, okay? Yeah. Yep. That's about 700,000 after tax. If I gave you a 10 multiple, you're worth 7 million bucks. How is it that I am going to pay 20 for a $7 million business? If everything goes right, mm -hmm. that's the horror story you've brought here. You've overvalued your business. We've had major entertainment companies in LA who have already given us offers to buy our company, and this is about what they're valuing it. Why are you such a greedy pig? I <laughs> Not greedy. I have lots of lots of high hopes well, for the well, company, and I want to grow fast. This, just because a Hollywood bozo offered you a twenty million dollar valuation, you know what the horror show is? Listen to you argue about valuation all the time. But well, then why don't you just give her two million dollars to ten percent? 
am projecting for the New York Haunted Hayride, which hasn't happened yet because it's the same model in LA. We're just plopping it there. We haven't done it yet. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Wait, go, ahead, go ahead. Ge geographically, it's a different model because it never rains in LA. Listen, I, I, I don't agree that your risk analysis is correct. It never happens that everything you roll out is successful day one. That's ridiculous. For me, it is not hard to get lots of people to come to the attractions. The hard part is to make it a great experience so they want to come back. Look, this is all fun and games, but we're talking about money here. I can't, I can't get there. I'm out. Melissa, for you to come close to your projections for next year, everything has to work perfectly all the time. I don't see you getting to those numbers next year. I'm out. For me right now, to give you $2 million, I feel it would take a really long time for me to see that back. So for that reason, I'm out. The risk is not as great as you probably would think. I mean, we will launch these attractions no matter what. I know that we can launch them faster, by having this money, we can launch them now. I'm an expert in high octane scare. You are? Yes, I can tell you a way to do this much cheaper. Wear a piece of jewelry and walk around where I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> that will give you a high octane Fair scare. Fair enough. Uh, I would just have to insult you with my offer. Um, Go ahead, insult her. That's about what it's worth. <laughs> Throw the offer, yeah. Okay, well then, I'll give you $2 million for 40%. Come on, Mark. Is that a yes or a no to him? Um, can I counter? Of course you can counter. Um, two million for 20%. I'll take that offer. Done. Really? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Go, Do we have a deal? Take All right. it. We have a deal. Wow. You should breathe. I love it. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'm wow. so Don't excited. Think about it. You owe me 5% for helping you on that. Totally. You can have free tickets to the LA Haunted Hayride. Thank you so Thanks, much, you guys. Good Appreciate luck. it. I don't know what just happened. Wait a minute. I lost out on a deal, come to think of it. Yeah, you just did. I think that the next generation of, of entertainment is experiential entertainment, where people get out of the house and go and get a unique experience. I thought for me to get my money back if I did that deal for two mil, I'd have to rise from the dead and look like that before I get it. You already have, Kevin. Are we excited? Are we excited? Mark on board, and $2 million, this is the biggest deal ever. I'm so excited. This changes the game for us. Wow. Next up is a stylish way to relax. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm the Chief Enthusiasm Officer. <laughs> and I'm Joe, and I'm the Chief Relaxation Officer. We're seeking $400,000 in exchange for 7% of our company. Wow. Between the emails popping up in your inbox, 24-hour news blaring from every screen, and constant pinging interruptions from your smartphone, we're all feeling more overwhelmed and stressed out than ever. We're all sick of feeling busy, hectic, and rushed. And our solution to this frustration is not another app or gadget. Our solution is the world's most ridiculously comfy hammock. <laughs> Introducing Yellow Leaf Hammocks. At Yellow Leaf Hammocks, we've perfected the hammock for the modern consumer. We've conquered every obstacle from creating a cocoon-like, no-wobble design to a shockingly soft yarn, so you won't get a rope burn when you're trying to relax, and they're completely weather safe. Now, we're breaking the boundaries of relaxation with our new invention, the Hammock Throne. The Hammock wow. Throne is an indoor-outdoor hammock chair that makes it possible to relax absolutely anywhere. With the hammock throne, you have a gorgeous piece of furniture that you can put out in your living room, on your tiny balcony, or even in your office. It extends back to create a full-length hammock, large enough for a seven-foot person, all within a diameter of just three and a half feet. Wow. And it swivels 360 degrees, <laughs> so you can angle it oh, to gaze out the window or relax while you watch Shark Tank. <laughs> First, we perfected the hammock. Now we brought it into your living room. So, sharks, 
Who wants to make the world a better place and join us in our quest to build a relaxation empire? So on the tables in front of you are specially selected hammocks. Oh. Uh, if you open these up, and first thing you want to look at the label. They're all signed by the woman who made it. Um, we're a social enterprise. I like that. Yeah, they're all. Where do you uh, make them? We work with moms in rural Thailand to create high wage jobs. What do they cost? What do you sell them for? The ones that we just gave you guys are a classic double. It's our top selling size. They retail for $1.99. Ooh, that's not bad. Our current line ranges between $1.49 and $2.99. The $199 hammock, how much do you pay for it? $44 is our landed cost. So what is an average hammock made out of something like this? What is that cost? You can find a hammock for $30 on Amazon, to be perfectly you honest. It's not it gonna, It's you know? not going to feel like this. It's not going to look and like Rachel, this. And Rachel, how much is the contraption? So this is the brand new hammock throne. This is our high-end hanging solution that we've just introduced. It's the That's first your of product. Many. You made yeah, this. Yeah, we designed this. Yeah, we did. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so this one is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,200. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Wow. But it's an indoor piece of furniture. Here's See, that seems like a lot. Tell us a story of how you got yeah. started by here. Our inspiration to start this was to literally end poverty in really vulnerable communities in the developing world. The idea for the company started when I initially went on a backpacking trip across Southeast Asia. Without me. Aww. Uh, we were living together in Boston at the time. And I stumbled across a hammock on a remote island and I was immediately struck by how soft it was. I was really impressed with the quality and I started asking some questions and learned that it was woven by this hill tribe community. It was part of an economic development program to help this hill tribe group out of poverty. And I was really struck by that in, in Thailand. Thailand. Yes. So I went to this community and I got to meet the actual weavers and hear their stories. And I learned that this community that started making the hammocks with the help of an aid worker had been previously in debt slavery. And the thing that really struck me was a lot of people kept coming to this community asking to join the program, but they were being turned away because there weren't enough sales. And I thought, well, we can start a little hammock company and, you know, provide enough jobs in this region. So I came home with a backpack stuffed full of hammocks and I came home to Rachel. I was thrilled that my boyfriend <laughs> wanted to quit his finance job and start a hammock company, as you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally I was like, yeah, honey, great <laughs> idea. What are your sales? This year, we're going to hit 1.3 million. Wow. Last year, we did 860,000. Your sales are primarily online? It's about 50-50 between a combination of direct-to-consumer sales through our website, as well as strategic partnerships. A big part of our early wholesale was kind of scattershot patio stores. We took a step back from that to focus on strategic partnerships. Who? Uh, it's Virgin uh, Voyages, which is Virgin's new cruise line business. Yep. So Virgin Voyages will be putting yellow leaf hammocks in every single balcony of every single cabin. What price do you get from them for these? They, they pay our wholesale price, but they'll also be um, retailing them. So they will be on the room service menus in the, on the, in the cabin and on the stores. The retail store is projected to more than double our current business. So you've got to be profitable then, right? Last year on uh, 860,000 in revenue, our uh, net income was 110,000. That's great. After it, paying yourself? After paying ourselves, yeah. John, Rachel. Yes. Here's my offer. Bam. Several of the five sharks here are probably have the most credentials about building social impactful businesses. So I understand the challenges you're facing. I really love a lot of what you stand for, but you have a $100,000 profit with a crazy $5.7 million valuation. So my offer is as follows, and it's an explosive offer. I want 33% of the company. Yes. I'll give you what? $1 million. Wow. Say yes or no, and then it's done. All sharks are still in. Rachel and Joe are seeking $400,000 for a 7% stake in their mission-based hammock company, Yellow Leaf Hammocks. Daniel is interested and has made a staggering offer. What? I want 33% of the company. Yowza. I'll give you what? $1 million. Say yes or no, and then it's done. Wow. $1 million, we, 33%. Wow. You, you mentioned our profitability on last year. I want to mention our profitability on this year. And what yeah, we're but doing that's a little year, wishful thinking, us, right? And I think you no, is go ahead. the order. Yeah. So on the 1.3 million that we're doing uh, this year, we're doing 360,000 in profit. One of the biggest things that we're looking to do with this money is we have a huge product roadmap of solutions. Rachel, so we stop started talking here. and take the deal. He's paying you over Why? eight times. There might be another that's deal. You. That's an amazing I, offer. We also recognize that we might not need all of that money right now. Oh. We also no, might not. 
are you doing? Well, we oh. might not. All right, well, hey, hey if we, you don't, we don't need all the money right now, you, I'm going to make you an offer. Are you we don't. We don't. We're offer? not prepared to give away that much. Oh, that much oh. Much. Oh. Listen, oh. I mean, oh. I sit here, I listen, oh. I So it's a helmet no. company. I, well, listen, he I just wanna... said maybe he doesn't need all that much money. So I will give you an offer. I'll go 400000 for... 20%. Now, uh, granted, his might be better offer for you. A million dollars for the 25% <laughs> and both of you. I don't want to go to the million. How about 500,000 for 25%? No. Yeah, that, that What's your least? counter for 25%? 600,000 for 14%. Oh, oh, wow. wow. I love the idea, and I think you guys are the real deal. Thank you. I will give you the 400,000 for 15 percent. If you take the million dollars from me, you won't need to dilute yourselves again. You, you know might. how much money Kaim has raised in its entire lifetime for the business? The total we ever raised in our entire history was 5.2 million dollars. We, we sell over a billion dollars in sales. I'll teach you and I'll help you run the business in an efficient way. Are you okay with 33 percent or is that too much for you? I think it's too much. Because What's the maximum that you're willing to do for someone that's gonna really roll up their sleeves and help you? We're looking at the future. If you took 33% now, I worry that we would it would hurt us at a subsequent round when we grow. Why? What subsequent round? When I started my business, started with one product, I took out a bank loan, it was about $325,000. I paid it back within a year and I never had to take a loan or bring in an investor again. So listen, I don't think you need to just sit there and take on all these investors and take in a whole ton of money. You just need to be strategically smart and take in the right investor. But you need somebody. That's the bottom line. So I'm gonna change my offer. My offer is this. I'm gonna go $200,000 flat. Then I'm gonna give you a loan of $200,000 at 7%. I'm going to fund purchase orders if you need them, and I'm going to ask for 17%. You may like it, you may not. But 15 the one percent. thing that I can offer oh. is, is I can offer somebody who will hold your hand, take you down the road, do everything that you need. Right. I care about helping women. I care about helping environment. I care about helping the world. And I really like the two of you. So I care about I helping you. I love the two of you. Lori, thank you, you so much. We love you guys. We're making it hard on them. What's the minimum percentage and what dollar do you want? Focus, Joe. You too. <laughs> What do you do $1 million for 25%? Just because I love you. We're gonna change some lives. I never thought he'd go down It's that. never happened before in Shark Tank history when someone came in here for 400,000 and walked out with a million. I'm really excited to work with you. We're gonna make so a huge thrilled. difference. I'm so thrilled, thank, thank you. you. Congrats. Next up is a solution to a common anxiety for electric vehicle owners. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Josh. And we're two of the co-founders of Spark Charge based in Somerville, Massachusetts. We're here today seeking a million dollars for a 6% stake in our company. Everyone knows electric vehicles are the future. Mm -hmm. They're better for the environment and soon they'll be everywhere. But there's one major thing keeping them from growing faster, range anxiety. Range anxiety is the fear of running out of charge in your electric vehicle. That's why I would love to introduce you to the Roadie, the world's first and only portable, modular, and ultra-fast EV charger. The anxiety of finding a charging station and the time wasted waiting for a vehicle to charge simply goes away when the charging station comes to you, no matter where you are. The Roadie has three core features. Number one, modularity. Units can be connected together to give the electric vehicle owner the exact amount of range they want. Number two, portable. Our portable units can charge an electric vehicle anytime and anywhere, making any location a charging station. And of course, the most important factor, speed. We can charge an electric vehicle at a rate of one mile every 60 seconds. So Sharks, help us create a more sustainable mobile EV charging infrastructure. Okay, and walk us through it. So how would I purchase wait, wait, that? Wait, 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 wait. Yep. Wait, wait, one second. I don't know anything about this. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. 
So yeah, it's really simple. So we actually sell directly to businesses. So we work with OEMs, roadside companies, on-demand companies, and service companies. They use the hardware and they go out there and they charge electric vehicle owners who request it. So AAA would carry this? Is AAA a customer okay. right now? We do have a program going on right now. The question is, how much does it cost you to make one of those? Per module, what do you sell them for? So per module, our cost of goods are roughly around uh, 2,500, and then companies pay a thousand dollar deposit, and then we charge them 150 buck monthly fee. Okay, so it's 150 bucks per month per module. Yep. Yes. In the past six months alone, we've done close to over half a million in sales, and we're on track to do over a million in sales this year alone. By end of next year, we're predicting to do close to 10 million in sales. This unit itself, it's patented through and through. We developed it from the ground up. We also built our own manufacturing facility in Buffalo, New York. We've also been really strategic with our funding, but we've won a lot of grants and awards to get us there. How much money have you raised from investors versus grants that you've received? Uh, I'd say we've probably raised about $3 million in venture, and the rest has been about awards, which comes about $2 million. So about, That's about fabulous. $5 million total. Very smart. And so what percentage of the company do you guys own now versus what the investors own? Uh, we, ha we, have, we have a little over 50%. But why do you believe you'll go to 10 million? You went from 500,000, you double that, congratulations, to 1 million, and now you're gonna 10 exit. Why do you believe you'll go to that? So the electric vehicle industry is growing rapidly. Essentially, the reason that we're here today, and that's a great point, is that we need to scale to keep up with demand. Obviously, you have to burn some cash to get to where you are now. How much have you lost to get to here? Uh, since the beginning, I think the burn rate is just a little over about four or four mil. So you guys are in a bad spot right now. No, no, no. We have no. Away. You've raised four million, right? We raised five million total. Okay, and you spent four, so you got a million left. Correct. And you've got in order to grow, you need to invest to build more batteries. Correct. All right. You're basically leasing these things to people, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. How much capital do I have to tie up in inventory? That's probably the best way to answer that question. About a third. You're basically going to carry a third of revenue as leased. In other words, you own it. It's on your balance sheet. Wouldn't it be better to simply sell this and then let the attrition occur in the market? Because I think that's a big issue. So, you know, we could sell it, but by releasing it out, essentially we control the asset. And then when the batteries come back, we can also repurpose them. Okay. So tell me again what it costs you to make. A 2500 And so your payback time 12 is months. approximately 12 months. How much are you charging then if it's 12 months and it's 20, if it's 150 a month? They pay a thousand dollar deposit. Oh, they pay $1,000. So they pay a deposit, deposit or is it an actual $1,000 for revenue? It's a $1,000 deposit. It's non-refundable. So it's not a deposit then. It's actually a $1,000 payment. Yes. I really love what you're doing here. And I also think that you can have a direct-to-consumer yes. end of this yeah. down the yes. road where they can put in their cars something yes. smaller, but will give them that little bit of peace of mind yes. where they can get to somewhere where they're safe. So we are gonna be coming out with a consumer product. The technology inside is somewhat the same. It's just smaller size, lighter package, more consumer friendly look. What will that retail for? Depending on scale, we might be able to get it for under 1500. How many units are being used right now? So today, in around total, 50. We, yeah, we 50. have 50. Oh, that's all? Deployed. Only 50 yep. units. You're back ordered right now then? Yes. Correct. I hate the lease part of the deal. I hate owning risk. That part, you lost me there, I'm out. Thank you, well, Kevin, thank I you appreciate it. Like Lloyd, I think the big opportunity is developing a consumer unit, but I find it really hard to believe that you're gonna deliver a consumer unit for a thousand bucks or less when your commercial units are thousands. And so for that reason, I'm gonna be out. Like I said, I think it's super smart. It is innovative. I mean, Mark is Mr. Technology. Like, I will always look to him to understand things that I don't actually understand when this, it comes to But this is more a capital tech. issue. So are you interested, Mark? Because Yeah, I'll I mean, I like in. the concept, right? So here's the challenge, right? The challenge is it's a lot of cash up front, and you're going to have to borrow money, not raise money, because if you raise more money, then you guys aren't going to have any ownership left, right? Unless you think it's going to be a multi-billion dollar company. And we do believe it's going to be a multi-billion dollar company. Um, according to our estimations, we can get to profitability without having to raise additional rounds by middle of next year. So here's the thing. Okay, 6% is nowhere near enough, particularly for two of us. Right, so Lori, I think the best way to do this is to let them make us an offer and we either say yes or no. So you know what your number is. Instead of us trying to figure out your number and us going back and forth in the interest of time, just give us your number, right? And if we like it, we say yes, and if we don't, we say no. Um, how about this? How about we do a million dollars for 10%, it's split 50-50, but we'll also throw in 2% advisor equity and a board seat. 
Two percent each. Uh, two percent each. We can do two percent each. So we would go 500, 500, seven percent, seven percent. Right, right? Five, five and two, basically. We have a deal? We got a deal. We have a deal. Let's charge oh, us up. Woo! Let's charge yeah. us up. We are going to do due diligence. I thought the That's chance of sure. you getting a deal was zero. No. no. So, I'm just saying. Come on. Yeah, I'm just saying. Good luck, I think guys. the best person in this deal is Lori, who got a free ride off of Mark Cuban's back. She's the bottom feeder. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style, Lori. Congratulations, Thank you guys. guys. Thank you, guys. It was the most exhilarating ride of my life. We really want to dig in and start building this business to be a billion dollar business. With the power of Lori and Mark, Spark Charge is now fully charged to take over the world. People don't realize when you raise money, it's not an accomplishment, it's an obligation. Exactly. But our media celebrates it. They celebrate raising money as if that's like profitability.